I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Welcome back to Moto Photo Adventures, everybody. This past weekend, we had an awesome time at the Palmetto ADV Rally. Jason, Steve, and I got together and camped out with a whole bunch of other riders, and we had a blast. Now, the problem is it poured down rain on Friday night. So what does that mean for our riding on Saturday and Sunday? You guessed it, a lot of slop. Lots of mud, lots of soupy uh, weather that we had to ride through on our different trails that we took on Saturday and Sunday. And if you guys have ever ridden through really squirrely situations and had the inability to touch, like if you wanted to reach down and dab for just a quick second and not be able to do it, that's where I was. I know, it's probably not everybody's problem. If you are six foot and got a long inseam, it's no big deal. And part of why I bought the Aprilia Tuareg 660 is, of course, because it has a relatively low seat height within its category. However, at five foot seven and a short 30 inch inseam, on a good day, <laughs> I, I, I just, I barely can touch the ground. So uh, I'm excited to bring to you guys a brand new, really cool product that we're gonna be mounting to our Aprilia Tuareg 660 project bike. Altrider has sent us their variable height suspension linkage. I'm super excited to finally have this and finally be able to install this on the Aprilia Tuareg 660. So we're gonna walk you through how to set that up and get it installed right now. I've been on the road for 10 days and just arrived at San Francisco International Airport only to find out that my flight has been delayed by like two hours. So I'm probably not going to make my connection in Atlanta. That really stinks. Now if you hate delays and hate bureaucratic red tape and you're in a motorcycle accident, I suggest that you skip all that other crap and go directly to the source. Contact Rick Stewart at scmotolawyer.com. You're not going to be dealing with some big agency. You're dealing with a single person who knows the ins and outs of dealing with accidents relating to motorcycles. And he will take care of you without any delays. I'm going to put his information up on the screen right now. And I suggest that you screen grab it with your phone. That way you have it with you. Put that in your favorites folder on your phone. And if you're ever in any trouble, you want to skip the delays and go straight to the front of the line contact Rick Stewart at scmotolawyer.com. So first, let's check out what comes in the kit. As you guys know, uh, Altrider always sends us a really cool little resealable bottle of Loctite or uh, thread locker. So that's kind of cool and they always send us stickers. You guys know I love my stickers that I put on my workbench. And then this is the actual box for the product. Uh, let's take a look. Inside, we have a little bit of packaging. Ah, this is the protector. So I will show that to you where that goes. It basically allows the linkage to be protected from the underneath. And it's especially cool because it has this little curved lip at the end. And that allows you, if you're ever trying to get over a log or something like that, and you've got you know this kind of rolling over it and you need to back up, it keeps it from catching. So that's brilliant, that's really cool. Here's the actual linkage itself. Let's take a look at that. Wow, very nice. As with all the Altbrider products, it's like a work of art. Machined out of billet aluminum, it is absolutely beautiful. Very cool. Uh, neat thing about their setup as well is they send a completely new, brand new OEM style set of needle bearings on the inside of this. So uh, you don't have to worry about removing those from your OEM uh, shock linkage. Uh, it's already in, installed in here and pre-sealed and pre-lubricated. So that's pretty neat. We do have the three bolts that are going to attach the protector piece here. So that's kind of neat. And then these are the actual 
height adjuster pieces. So the neat thing about the variable height adjuster piece that comes from Altrider is they've got it set up to where once you get it bolted in place, you've got it all set up, it's actually super easy if you decide you want to change to a different height, then all you have to do is remove these, flip it around, or use one of the other bolts, and uh, it allows you to basically adjust the height up or down depending on the riding situation. So um, let's say you're just uh, you know going riding in the forest on an afternoon and you're not carrying any gear and you're just going to go out and you know rip through the, the corners and have some fun, um, you would probably want to have a higher suspension so you have that extra ground clearance. If you're going to be riding um, through the street and you know you're not going to be doing any off-roading for a while, you're just doing some commuting and you want to have that security of being able to plant your feet at the stoplight, uh, then you can lower it. And so if you're doing a road trip, you can lower the suspension. Um, and, and changing it out once you've got everything installed is super quick. You can you know, do it in like five or ten minutes. So that is really, really neat. Now one of the brilliant thoughts that they put into this is they actually engraved the variable height uh, amounts into each of the inserts. So the way this works is if you look on the underside, each of these inserts has one dot or two dots, and you can insert them with either one dot facing forward or two dots facing forward. When you have the single dot facing forward, you're going to get either a plus 20 millimeter rise in your suspension or a negative 19 millimeter uh, lower suspension. If you flip these around, to where the two dots are facing forward, you either get a plus six millimeter rise or a minus 32 millimeter lowering kit. Simply by flipping around your insert, one dot forward or two dots forward, gives you a completely different setup. Yep. So depending on how you have your inserts placed, you either get a six millimeter or a 20 millimeter rise, and that equates to about a quarter inch or three quarters of an inch. And depending on how you have it turned for the uh, lowering side, you're either going to get a 19 millimeter lowering, which is about three fourths of an inch, or 32 millimeter of suspension lowering, which is about an inch and a quarter. I'm personally going to start with the three quarter inch lowering, and we'll see how that fits my height. Now you'll want to stick around till after the install is done because after we lower the rear suspension using the variable height adjuster kit that they've sent, you also need to adjust the front forks in compliance with that to make sure that the bike stays balanced. So stay till the end so we can make sure and uh, walk you through that setup as well. Next, let's go ahead and look at what tools you will need for the installation. All right, taking a look at the uh, tools we will need, it's a fairly uh, easy install, but you will need to remember that we are going to reuse the bushing from the OEM suspension linkage, and we're also going to reuse the pivot bolts. Uh, for those two items, you'll want to do a little bit of light greasing when you get those out, so make sure you have some grease and, of course, some nice rags handy for you. Uh, after that, you're going to also need a 4 millimeter Allen key, and you'll need a socket wrench to uh, adjust that as well. You'll need a 15 millimeter spanner wrench and a 13 millimeter spanner wrench. Those are for the two bolts that hold the OEM in place. Uh, in addition to that, if you want to, of course, you could get a 13 or a 15 millimeter uh, socket wrench and use that with your socket wrench there. Torque wrench, uh, so that you can make sure that your torques are in spec at the end. And of course, we already mentioned the uh, blue Loctite. They send you some already, but I'm going to actually throw that into my travel kit so that I can have that ready for me on the road. And I'll use this larger bottle here when I'm actually installing it in my garage. Now, it's not part of the actual install, but you will also need a six millimeter Allen wrench. And that is for adjusting the front suspension in compliance with the back. If you haven't already seen it on our previous install video with the Aprilia Touareg project bike, we already mounted Altrider's adjustable aluminum side stand. And uh, you want to go check that out because as you're adjusting the suspension linkage up or down, your side stand is going to cause your bike to lean a little bit more or a little bit less. So having their uh, adjustable aluminum side stand in conjunction with this linkage is a great idea. Next, we're going to go ahead and start with the install. 
Oh, and don't forget Jason's fantastic little pro tip. When you're working on your bike, make sure you wear your riding uh, pants because you've got those pads under your knees. <laughs> First step on the install is just to put the flathead screws through the linkage guard and into the uh, linkage itself. And we'll get that set up first before we actually begin disassembling. Just a couple little drops of thread lock on each of these. Beautiful. That looks slick, you guys. Uh, remember, they are going into aluminum, so you don't need to over tighten these. Uh, they really only need uh, six uh, Newton meters or four foot pounds of torque to uh, get them secured onto the linkage. All right, before we start the actual disassembly here, let me uh, mention that this is going to be tricky. Uh, normally, if you don't have a center stand on your bike, you would just put it up on a jack or a box or something like that using your skid plate. That would be the easy way to do it. Uh, I considered taking my center stand off because it does make working in here really, really tight, but I think I can get it out and get the new one in without removing my center stand. And in fact, I'm just gonna use it to support the rear wheel off the ground. So, Bear with me. Let's see if this works. <laughs> I'm not sure it will, but we're sure going to try. To remove the OEM linkage, there's essentially two pivot bolts. One goes right through here, and then the other one goes right through here. This is the linkage right here that we're removing, and this is your shock, of course, that goes up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this pivot bolt first, and loosen this pivot bolt second and um, see if we can't wiggle them out with, <laughs> without somehow getting in the way of the uh, uh, center stand. That's our goal for, for today. The nylock nuts on these bolts take the 15 millimeter wrench and because the weight of the wheel is pushing down on this uh, bolt, it's holding the bolt in place, which means that I really don't need the 13 millimeter to be holding the nut on, uh, or the bolt on the other side. It's just coming off without uh, me needing to hold that. So that makes things a little bit easier. Ooh, this is a little tighter. Now because the weight of this whole swing arm and rear wheel is pushing down on this pivot bolt, I can't push it out. So I'm gonna use my boot here and roll that underneath the tire to lift this up and get the pressure off. And now you can see the bolt coming out. And voila. Next, we're going to try and get the front pivot bolt loosened. There we go. It's slow going because I'm inhibited by the center stand, but it's working. Just a sixteenth of a turn at a time, and I'll see you in a few minutes. And once you have that nut off, just push the pivot bolt out. Uh, Jason? Yes, sir. Do I need to look at Can it on this side for you? Yes, please. All right, hang on a second. Let me take a look. 
In fact, I'll let the move your arm for just a second. I'll see what's going on here. Let me, I'll even get the Osmo to take a look at it so I can see it from the underside. Can't oh see. ho! Move your hand there. All right, you got an issue. We, is, it, is it hitting the... It's the hitting the center stand bracket. Oh, come on. Which means it ain't coming out all the way. You've got a barrier to completion, Holmes. Oh my gosh. Yep. And if it's I, so close. And if I'm evaluating what I'm looking at properly, here, let me get your flashlight. If I'm evaluating what I'm seeing properly, that entire plate's got three big bolts on it. and it ha Your whole center stand's got to come off. No way. And to, to get the top bolt off the center stand bracket, uh -huh. you got to take the whole left side of the bike off. That all this has to come you off? Gotta take all, you got to take the foot peg and the shifter bolt and holy. Whoa. This is not, this is not the two-hour video project we thought. And I would imagine this side probably has to come off too. If I would assume. This whole center stand as long, has if, to come out. Yeah, if the center stand bracket is in two pieces, you might be able to get away with just taking one off, the left side off, and to get that the um, linkage bolt out. But you're definitely oh. going to have to disassemble Stephanie here. No, no disassemble. No disassemble number five. Disassemble Stephanie. No. <laughs> so yeah, all right, we're gonna have to put this on pause for a second. We're gonna have to do some evaluation, you think? Son of a biscuit eater. Exacto mundo. Well guys, there's a first time for everything. I think this is the very first install video we've ever done that we have not been able to complete. The amount of daylight we have left the amount of brain cells we have left and the amount of patience remaining in our guts just isn't going to be enough for all of this. So I'm going to put the two pivot bolts back in, temporarily restore Sahara back to her natural state. And I'm going to write to uh, Martin and Jeremy or give them a call at Altwriter and see if they have any input. But in the meantime, I would like to crowdsource this and ask each of you guys, hmm, has anybody installed the Altrider swing arm on a bike that has a center stand? My center stand happens to be the T-Rex. So I don't know if that affects it or if it's different from the Aprilia center stand. But tell me in the comments, do I have to remove the entire center stand or is there a shortcut that I am missing that we just can't figure out? Uh, I would really appreciate your help. Uh, I will contact Altrider. Without the center stand in place, we were sailing smooth it probably would have installed no sweat but this uh, center stand has thrown a big wrench into our installation video stay tuned for part two and please offer up any assistance or advice you can we sure need it Hello, Alt Rider, can I help you? Alt Rider, we have a problem.